Hey there, fellow role-playing enthusiasts! Infinite Realms kicks your pen and paper RPG experience up a notch. To make things a breeze, I'm Jan, your guide in this video. Let's tackle what to do at the first start and when creating individual scenarios. Ready? Let's get started! Before we dive in completely, are you thinking of using an extra screen or projector for your players? If so, plug it in, set it to extend your desktop and fire up Infinite Realms. You'll get a handy pop-up window at the start, letting you choose the right screen. Plus, you can set it to automatic whenever it's plugged in. Simple, right? Alright, let's kick things off in the main menu, specifically in the settings. Here you can tailor the resolution and graphics quality to suit your needs. We've got two key players here main screen resolution and render resolution. The former is all about the game master screen, while the latter decides how sharp and, unfortunately, resource hungry the actual map appears. Right below that, we stumble upon the setting for the screen diagonal. This number depends on the screen or TV your players are rocking. I'm rolling with a 32 inch device, so I punch in 32. Up top, you'll spot the defaults tab. Here we dial in our preferred grid size. Since we are often in D&D or Pathfinder realm, Infinite Realms defaults to a generous 1 inch per grid cell. Now here's where the previously set diagonal comes into play. Infinite Realms cleverly adjusts the grid and map size to the player screen so that each cell is indeed 1 inch. Ok, let's craft our scenario. Personally, I usually whip up a fresh scenario for each campaign but feel free to go with your own style and create one for each session maybe. A scenario is essentially a collection of scenes, our term for different map types, but more on that in a bit. As we dive into setting up a new scenario, our first stop introduces us to the home scene where the scenario manager eagerly awaits our creative touch. Picture this scene as your launching pad for every adventure. If you happen to have a champion or hero subscription, you can even toss in your own graphic. This graphic takes center stage, becoming the automatic loading and lock screen for your players. Quick heads up though, no effects work here as they would not show up on the lock screen either. Neither does Fog of War. What does work though is that subscribe button. Stay in the loop and never miss another tutorial or feature video from us. The scenario manager is how we add scenes to our scenario. Scenes in this context are the various maps we want to toss into the mix. Infinite Realms has got your back with four different types. Legacy are classic images and videos. You can find a list of supported formats on our website infiniterealms.app. UVTT maps are from different editors like Dungeon Draft, Dungeon Alchemist or Dungeon Fork. Beyond just the image, these maps bring along details about walls and lighting. Infinite Realms takes note of these when revealing the Fog of War. For a Unity scene, check out Danny's tutorial to venture into crafting your own 3D maps and squeezing even more juice out of Infinite Realms. 3D maps are massive environments crafted by us, designed to offer a seamless gaming experience. We keep growing this collection to provide more locations for your adventures. All scenes, except legacy scenes, automatically adjust to your set screen size. That means you load your file or one of our 3D maps and you are ready to roll. But fear not, even legacy scenes are ready to roll in no time. Upon your first launch, you will be greeted by the legacy file setup, offering three options to adjust the map size and grid orientation. If things seem slightly off, no worries. You can redo it later using this handy button. Just be aware it does reset the Fog of War and other settings. Now, for those times when you are pressed for time or merely looking to loosely match the map size, the manual mode has got your back. Two sliders let you adjust the size until it's just right. The second option is to specify the number of grid cells in width. If you scout your maps on platforms like Reddit, such as R Battle Maps, the size is often in the title. If it's not an exact match, no sweat, the manual mode is there for minor adjustments. The third option gets a bit technical. Here you are inputting the pixel size of a grid cell. Without delving too deep in digital images, DPI or dots per inch is often mentioned. 
These dots are our screen pixels, and since we are playing with 1 inch squares, you can easily adopt the value. For instance, 72. Simple as that. Now, let's kick off this adventure. Hit that like button and you're set to build more scenes, experiment with effects, weather and music to transport your players deeper into your gaming realm. Get creative and take your role-playing experience to the next level. If you're seeking inspiration, we've got more videos for you, delving into all the possibilities in detail. Until next time.